Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mark Dirks, and on behalf of ACRL and Choice, I'd like to welcome you to today's program, 10 Ways the Libby App Can Help You Reach Readers on Campus and Off, which is sponsored by Overdrive Professional. Today's discussion is one in a series of sponsored webinars from ACRL and Choice. Free to users, these structured 60-minute live presentations provide the opportunity for interactive discussions of important new issues and developments in academic librarianship by librarians, vendors, authors, and other interested stakeholders. Before we get started, I'd like to point out a few features of the webinar software. In the main area of the screen, uh, you should be able to follow along with the presentation materials. Along the right-hand side, you should see a Q&A panel and maybe a chat panel. If you're not seeing the chat panel, you can click the button on the bottom of your screen that uh, sort of looks like a dialogue cloud. Should be second or third in from the right there. Please use that Q&A panel to submit your questions to our speakers. At the end of the presentation, we'll take some time to answer as many questions as we can get to, so please do send them in throughout. Um, and if you're having any technical difficulties, that's what the chat box is for. Feel free to send me a note uh, through that chat box, and, we, and you and I will troubleshoot the issue uh, privately. Today, well, we're using the hashtag ACRL Choice Webinars during the event, so if you've got another screen handy, shout out to us. We're at choice underscore reviews on Twitter. And also note that we are recording today's program, um, so everyone who signed up should receive a follow-up email with a link to that recording. All right, and our speakers today are Lindsay Levinson, she's an account manager at Overdrive, and Adam Sokol, he's the integrated marketing specialist at Overdrive as well. So with that, I would like to hand things over to Lindsay. Here you go, Lindsay. All right. Thanks, Mark. So I'm um, here today to present 10 ways Libby can help you reach readers on campus and off. Um, as Mark said, my name is Lindsay. I am the account manager dealing with our academic partners, some corporate and government partners. Um, so here's Adam and I, our lovely faces. Um, so for those of you not knowledgeable about Overdrive, we are the leading digital reading platform. Um, we have the largest catalog to meet reading needs of all audiences. Uh, as of right now, we have about 2.2 million titles that are available to our academic partners for purchase. Um, we have a great service and expert staff. I may be biased, but we are always here to help you. Great staff here. Um, a great user experience, and we're going to demo Libby, one of the user experiences available here. We have over 44,000 partners that we have worldwide, and the app Libby, which we're going to talk about, um, has been called out by Time Magazine and PC Magazine as um, some great apps for reading. All right. So, why Libby? Um, and as Adam is going to demo, Libby is a step-by-step -step onboarding. First time you open the app, it's very easy to understand, find the library. Um, the loans and holds from all of the libraries will appear on one shelf, um, so users can be logged into uh, multiple libraries and have multiple cards going at once, all within the same app. The reading is immediate after you borrow. You don't have to choose a file format to kind of decide when you're checking out this ebook and audiobook. At a glance, progress through each book on your shelf. You can see where you're at throughout the book, um, stop and start points. Navigate between the shelf and your library's catalog, so taking a look at your shelf, what you currently have checked out, what you've read, as well as the library's catalog titles that are available. You can add, remove, and rename cards from all of the libraries that you have in one place, and tags to categorize the books however you'd like the, the titles that you've read. And then some in-browsing and list preferences um, to show only the content you're interested in, whether someone just wants to read nonfiction or fiction or a certain subject, they're able to kind of categorize that for the content they want to see. All right, so number one out of the 10, easy sign on. Um, so Libby makes it very easy for users to get started. We have several different types of authentication that are available once you become an OverDrive partner. Um, these are a single sign-on federated type of authentication that we have available to connect with. Easy Proxy, which a lot of our college partners use. 
We can do direct ILS as well as having some APIs integrated into your catalog and library card manager. So that's a pretty easy way to manage the users. It's a portal that we give you access to. You input the cards, whether you want to use uh, student IDs, library IDs, email addresses, you manage those cards on your end. And um, a lot of times if you're using the single sign-on federated or easy proxy, students, users can utilize the same credentials that they use elsewhere at your school. So it's something that they are familiar with when they're signing into Libby or in the browser. All right. Number two, anytime, anywhere access. So this is going to allow your users to access titles anywhere at any time. Um, titles are available to be checked out 24 seven. And there's a lot of great compatibility, whether it's the iOS device and Android app, a lot of different compatibility to meet your students and faculty where they're at on their devices. All right. Number three, so as I mentioned, multiple library cards. So with Libby, the users can access cards from their public library, college library in the same app. And that is really great for students and faculty because a lot of them are already familiar with OverDrive and Libby through their public library. So it's an experience that they're already used to doing and now they can just connect to have access to even more titles through your college as well as whatever public library account that they have, giving them access to a large amount of titles. Maybe there are so many titles in the public library, there's a couple titles that have a really long hold list. You're able to purchase additional copies of that title for your users. Um, and then they take advantage of the academic library without having to manage multiple apps for the public library. All right, number four, audiobooks. So audiobooks have been really on the rise. We're seeing a really big increase in checkouts and interest for audiobooks. A lot of different reasons. People are commuting, whether it's students or faculty, um, if it's a commuter school, they can listen in the car. Um, a lot of athletes listen while they're working out. Um, and they accommodate multiple different learning styles you can slow down or speed up the narration of an audiobook, which is really nice. Um, they are available, obviously, to students with visual impairments. Um, and what's really great, uh, new for us with Libby, it is, it is compatible with Apple CarPlay as well as Android Auto. So anybody who has that, that capability in their car is able to get Libby in Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And it's a really great experience because you're just basically using that app as you would um, in your car to listen to audiobooks. Okay, number five, so customized experience. So users are able to customize their experience within Libby. Um, Adam is gonna demo some of those, those customizations that are available, but again, auditory learners can take advantage of the audiobooks that are available. And then the different reading settings. So uh, for eBooks, it allows readers to personalize um, the text size. So you can make the text larger or smaller to kind of meet the needs of however you want to read that title, whether you want large text or smaller text on the screen. You can also enable dark mode for reading, um, as well as the open dyslexic font is available for within the eBooks for different reading experiences for different users. Okay, so number six, shelves and tagging. So this is allowing um, users to put tags on titles. It's a flexible way to organize the books that they've already finished, things that they're interested in, things they liked, things they didn't like. Um, users can tag books from all of their libraries to on one shelf. So any titles that they've read on the public library, as well as any titles within um, your academic collection, OverDrive collection. They can have as many tags as they like. Um, what's really great about um, OverDrive and within the Libby app, as, as a library, you can curate your content. And that is done through uh, Marketplace, which is our admin portal where uh, managers can take a look at the lending settings. They're able to set how many titles um, a user can check out. They can set loan periods. So our standard loan periods are 
seven, 14, or 21 days. So they can set those, those around. Um, it's where content is purchased. It's where you're checking your reports for different circulation stats, user stats. But within Marketplace, you can curate your content. So you can create um, different collections of titles that will appear in Libby. So let's say you wanted to do a Women's History Month collection. You could do a collection full of titles related to that. Um, and it'll appear within the app as the different collections that users can see. You can call out different types of content, whether you have certain reading programs that are going on, um, different bookshelves, uh, we've had a lot of uh, libraries that have done common read titles. So we have the ability to get simultaneous use titles. Um, let's say you have a campus read and you want to have 90 days access to that title, unlimited use. That's something that we are able to do. And you're able to call all, all of that out, organize the collection however you want to, whether it's by fiction, nonfiction, subject related, all that's available um, to create those shelves. All right. Number seven, so it is not just for students. I have a lot of colleges that really um, offer this to faculty and staff, not only as a perk, but as sort of a professional development type of resource. So content ranging from professional development, self-improvement, education, business-related titles, soft skills. So it's a great uh, resource for faculty as well. A lot of our colleges partner with faculty to see what types of titles they want in the collection, whether it's something they're using for course material, um, and a lot of audiobooks, of course, as we talked about, when they're on the go, um, a lot of faculty enjoy. And personal development titles, we have a lot of language learning titles, so it's a huge catalog of content um, that can not only be for, for students, but for faculty and staff as well. Okay. So maximizing usage with multiple lending models. So Overdrive has a couple different lending models that our titles are available in. I mentioned we have about 2.2 million titles um, that academic libraries have access to purchasing. Um, one copy, one user is the majority of titles in our collection. This is just like it would be for a physical collection, one copy of a title to one user at a time. You can purchase multiple copies of titles, of course, if you want to, and you own those titles in perpetuity. Those titles are never going to expire from your collection. As long as you are a partner with Overdrive, they will remain in your collection. So metered access. This is something that some of our publishers have chosen to sell their titles in. Metered access is still one person at a time, but they will eventually expire from your collection after a determined period of time. So some of the publishers have it set as 12 months or 24 months. Sometimes it's a month, sometimes it's a number of checkouts, whether it's 24 checkouts, um, and sometimes it's a combination of both. So metered access titles are ones that will eventually meter out. At that point, you have the ability to um, repurchase them or weed them from your collection. Um, the user's not gonna know any differently for any of these lending models. It looks the same to them. It's more on the back end, the administrative end that you're managing the different lending models. Simultaneous use, this allows um, checkout by an unlimited number of users simultaneously. Um, different kinds of plans from audiobook and ebook suppliers, as well as magazines. So magazines is something that's fairly recent to us. Um, these are magazine titles that render really well on Libby. You're subscribing to all of the issues within that year, and you get to keep all those issues even if you decide not to renew the plan. All of those issues backdated are going to remain in your collection. And um, cost per search. So cost per search is a little bit different because you are not actually purchasing the title. You are only um, paying when somebody checks it out. And each checkout is a little bit different depending upon whether it's an ebook or an audiobook and by publisher. So each of them is a little different. I would say they probably range from about $1.99 to $2.99 per CERC. Um, and that's a form of simultaneous use. Unlimited number of users can have that checked out at a time. The way that works as far as billing is it is added up throughout the month and you receive one invoice for that entire month. 
And there's a lot of different settings you can place on cost per SERP as well. You're able to determine the number of titles a user can, a CPC titles that a user can check out in a month. And you can also place um, restrictions on a dollar amount budget for the cost per SERP title. And so, as I mentioned, this is really good for campus reads, the simultaneous use or the cost per CERC, really great for titles that you may have as required reads for certain classes or as an all campus read. Um, and special sale pricing we can do as well for um, bulk discount on titles. So a lot of different options when it comes to the actual content in your collection. All right, so number nine, connecting students with the best content. We have a very large collection um, of titles, of publishers that you can purchase. Um, and it really just depends upon what that academic institution's goals are for their collection. We have some uh, colleges and, and universities that only purchase best-selling fiction and nonfiction to kind of supplement um, getting rid of the actual physical collection in their library. We have some that do a mix of both. Some are going to get some academic course materials, um, test prep titles, study guides that are also available. We have over 40 different university presses, including Yale, um, Purdue, MIT Press. All of those titles are also available for purchase. Um, wide range of other publishers, academic publishers, O'Reilly, Cengage, Elsevier, John Wiley. So a really large collection of uh, content that you can choose from in Marketplace so it allows you to customize um, the collection to however you, whatever you need to do with it, whether you have certain academic initiatives, um, you want to offer fiction and nonfiction, it's really up to you. And number 10 is hold re-delivery. So within Libby, this is something that we just released, and it gives you the ability to connect more readers to the right book at the right time. So withhold re-delivery, users are able to suspend a hold even after it's been made available to them. Let's say they already have too many titles checked out, or they have a lot of holds, and they're not quite ready for this title. They can suspend that hold for, let's say, seven days. And they're going to be able to maintain their place on that wait list, but it will, the title will be delivered to the next person on that wait list. The next person is still going to have their hold. It's basically just maintaining your place in that list, and it's going to make access to books uh, more efficient for readers and the library and increase patron satisfaction. This is a request we've gotten from our libraries for a long time, and so it's something we just implemented. All right, so that is some great information about, about 10 things about Libby, and I'm going to kick it over to Adam, who is actually going to give you a demo of Libby. All right, so I'm going to walk you through everything that you can do in Libby, a bunch of fun different ways to search and all sorts of things of that nature. Uh, just as a reminder, my name is Adam Sokol. I've been in Overdrive about nine years, and I'm an integrated marketing specialist, which is a fancy way of saying it's my job to find new Libby users. So I live and breathe this app just about every day. If I'm not doing it for work, I am using it personally. So uh, that's why I'm here to show you a little bit about it. So I want to show you exactly the first thing you're going to see when you download Libby. Uh, as Lindsay mentioned, it's available for Android, as well as for Apple users. Uh, you can go in. And when you download the app, the first thing it's going to basically say is, hello, welcome, welcome to Libby. And the first thing you're going to get is a question that says, do you have a library card? Um, whether or not you do or do not, it, it really, either way, you'll be able to use the service just fine, especially for your students, who most of them, uh, as Lindsay mentioned, are going to be able to use their, their email address to log in. So we'll, we'll say not yet right now. And then the next thing it's going to ask me is, you know, do you want to find the library? Let's, let's get started. So we'll find the library nearby us. And you can use your location. I'm going to say that I'm going to search for a library because I have a few tests in here that I want to show you. Uh, so up at the top right here, you'll be able to search by a library, specifically by name. So if they want to search for your university, like University of Pittsburgh, for example, um, or they can use the zip code or the city. Uh, I'm going to show you one of the public libraries. Um, the only reason that I have a test card in there, but for you, the experience is going to be visually the exact same. So everything I'm showing you here is exactly what your students and your faculty and staff are going to be able to experience. So 
the first thing you'll notice on any library, whether it's Seattle Public Library here that services one of the largest cities in the country, or uh, a small university library that's servicing uh, several thousand students, is you're going to be able to have customized collections here. So you'll notice right away, there's this first one here that they say, uh, let there be light. Uh, they decided to have some fun with daylight savings time, and they created a collection specifically all about daylight savings time. And as you scroll down, there's going to be lots and lots of options in here. Uh, every single collection is going to have this little simple explore tab where you can see various uh, tools like what's new, uh, if you want to look specifically in audiobooks, if you want to look for some of the most popular books, uh, the things that are newest to the collection. You're going to be able to have all of those various options. And I'm going to go into to all of these in just a moment here and, and dive around and, and have some fun here. Uh, but as you, you keep going down, what you'll see is each and every one of these is customized. So they have To Fetch a Thief, which is some fun wordplay. These are mystery titles featuring furry friends. As a dog owner, I'm a big fan of that one. Um, they have stuff that is specifically for their area of the country. So they have Northwest nonfiction. And each and every single one of these is customizable by your staff. So uh, I saw somebody ask about specific classes and things of that nature. So if you, as a college or university, wanted to create a collection specifically for you know, English 402 or your incoming freshmen for specific books that they need to read, you'd be able to put all of those right in a collection right here. And then as you continue to scroll down, you'll see another option, which I really, really love, which is the fact that you can explore all of your subjects and you'll be able to see how many books are in each of, each of those, and then you can pair them down as you go. So, um, you're going to see literally endless amounts of collections. In fact, if I keep scrolling, it's just going to keep showing me more and more collections. Uh, we call Libby our one-tap reading app, the reason being that you're always one tap away from anything you want to do in the service. So down here in the bottom, you'll see a library button. If I tap that, it's going to take me all the way back to the top. But in the middle here, you'll see whatever book I've read last, and it'll open that up for me. And then it'll also take me to my shelf, which is another thing I'm going to get to briefly. But Again, you're always one tap away, so if you are playing the app and you get really deep into a collection and you get worried and you want to go back to the beginning, just tap that library button in the bottom left-hand corner and it's going to take you exactly where you need to be. So I mentioned there's a, a number of different collections and ways to explore. You can go into either of these collections, any of these collections, just by clicking it, and then it will show you everything that's in that particular collection, and you'll see every single book has the ability to borrow read a sample or tag, and I'll get into all of those in just a moment here. Something that I really do love, you know, I mentioned at the beginning, you can find your library and begin browsing without putting in a library card at first. And what I mean by that is that you can go into any collection here and see any book, and even if you don't have a library card uh, in Libby right away, you can tap the read sample button, and it's going to open that book up for us, and I'll have access to read up to 10% of that particular title. So it's going to take me through the whole book here, and all I'm doing is clicking on the right-hand side. Uh, if you were using your finger on a phone, you could swipe. Uh, and then when I'm ready to get back to the library and keep uh, having some fun, I just click in the middle of the, of the screen here with my finger, and again, go right back to the library. And you'll notice that the book in the middle here has changed. Uh, before it was that adorable dog book that I was reading, and now it's the sample that I was at. So again, it's always going to show you the most recent book that you read but you don't need a library card to sample books. Naturally, you'll need one to borrow them, but you can sample up to 10% of every, anything that's in your collection. Uh, there is a search bar at the very top of the screen, so if you're a person who is going to the library to look for something specific, if you know exactly what you're looking for, all you have to do is start typing, and whether you're looking for a specific author, it's going to bring us up everything by that particular author in your collection, or if you want to search for a specific uh, genre, you can just do something like mystery. I have a safe search here for mystery. It's going to pull up titles that not only have the word mystery in them, but it's also going to show me here. It says see also these collections. So I can go right into the mystery collection there. Uh, you can search for titles by series. You can look for specific authors, specific books, or you can just do that general uh, look for a specific word. Or if we want, Back at the very beginning here again in our library, we can click this Explore button on the right-hand side. And that's going to show us a number of these different guides. And these are uh, provided, these are optional for you as a library to add in. 
Uh, we're looking at a specific library that has a number of different language collections. So say you were a college that uh, wanted to put in a collection of Spanish language titles. You can go right there and then everything that's going to show up in this collection is going to be those Spanish language titles. Um, these are great ways for people who maybe they have some sort of an idea what they're looking for, uh, but they want to browse by at least just a little bit of a guide. So for example, again, if I wanted to break down all of the subjects here, I can just click that subject button, and then you're going to see all of the subjects here, which I'm able to sort on the right-hand side by alphabetical or by number of titles. As Lindsay mentioned, uh, Overdrive is a company, Overdrive Professional, we have over 2 million titles available. So you as uh, a library and university are going to pick and choose all the titles that you want to have available for your uh, patrons and your students. And so that means that you'll see a different collection, whether you're at your library uh, or the public library that might be in your system. And so if I choose one of these, you'll see that anything that's uh, titled under fiction, there's over 76,000 of them at this particular library. And so that can be pretty overwhelming. So if I click fiction, it's going to pull up all of those that I have the ability to take a look at. And you'll see at the top here that every one of these buttons has a little line under it. And that means that I can click any of them and I can break this down a whole lot more. So right now we're looking at everything that is fiction. And maybe I want to look at everything that is classified as fiction as well as fantasy. And now I'm going to look at a slightly smaller collection, but that's still pretty overwhelming, admittedly. So let's say that I want to look at anything that's fiction, fantasy, and it's also classified as literature. And so now we're getting a little bit closer to maybe the ability to, similar to going into a library and looking at one specific shelf here. So you'll see that there's a lot of books here still, and maybe I want to take a look at my preferences. And what my preferences is going to enable me to do is just help me determine if I want to look at titles that are just ebooks, or maybe I want to look at specifically audiobooks. So let's just say I only want to look at the ebooks here. And then I also only want to see books that are currently available. So as Lindsay mentioned, a lot of the collection is going to be one copy, one user, and that means you have the ability to place a hold on titles and wait in line for those books. But right now, let's just say I want to find a book that's available for me to actually borrow. When I hit Apply Preferences, it's going to pare it down even more. And now I can go into one of these books, and I can decide to borrow it right away. Tap Borrow, and it's going to open right up for us in just a moment, and then I'm going to have that title for 21 days here. So this title is going to go on my shelf, and I've got it there for later if I want to go into my shelf, or if I want to keep browsing, maybe I'm someone who's a really fast reader, and I want to go back and find another title. But now I'm interested in placing a hold on one of them. So I can go in here, and it's going to save all of these search preferences for me. So if I want to take that back off, we'll go to everything. We'll hit apply preferences. And now you'll see that there's a difference here with these titles that say place a hold. So I can click on one of these books. And I have the ability to place a hold, which means it's going to put me in line for this particular title. Any book that's not currently available, you're going to see that it has a little calendar next to it. And if I click on that, it's going to let me know exactly you know, about how long I'm going to have to wait for this title. So it'll say exactly how many copies the library currently owns, how many copies are currently in use, and how many people are waiting for a copy. And so what this is telling me is I will be waiting for this particular book about nine weeks. So if I say, yes, that works, I'm going to place a hold on this title. And now I'll click place a hold. And then it's going to do the same thing as before. It's going to let me read a sample of that. It's going to let me keep browsing. Or it's going to let me go to my shelf and look at everything I've got. You'll see here it also has an option to suspend a hold. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. But basically, that's going to let me adjust how long I need to wait. You know, maybe a student is coming up on finals or something, and they need to hold off on that book just a little bit longer. So we'll go back to our collection here. And I'm going to scroll down, and there's a few more things I want to show you. We are the only service that works with libraries, schools, and colleges around the world that has capability of working with Kindle. And this is for the United States only currently. And so you'll notice here there's an option to read with Kindle. So uh, we love our Overdrive or our Libby app from Overdrive, and we uh, it's an award-winning service that we put a lot of work in, but we also respect that there are a number of people out there who own Kindles and they love the Kindle reading experience. So if you want to set it up to send titles directly to your Kindle, you're able to do that 
right here where it says Read with Kindle, it will give you some great information there. I want to go into a book and show you guys a little bit of what's going on in you know, particular titles, all the different options you have available at this point. So what we'll do is we're going to go to our shelf, which again is a button that's always available for you. You can go to your shelf. And here on your shelf, what you'll see is you have a few options. You have all of your loans, which is where we're going to go first, any titles you put on hold, and then tag, which we'll get to in just a moment. So when I go to my loans, I'm going to see everything that I have borrowed. There's that lovely title with the pup. And then you're going to see here, when you look at your loans, it's going to show you exactly how long you have, you've, you've progressed through that title. So I've gotten through about a fourth of this book, uh, a little bit past a third of Michelle Obama's audiobook. And then all the other ones that I haven't currently started is going to let me know exactly how many days I have left in those particular titles. Next to every single book, you'll also see this uh, little button that says Manage Loan. If you tap on that, it's going to give me the ability to choose what I want to read with. So if I want to read with a Kindle, I do have that capability. Or I can just stay right in, uh, in Libby as well. Uh, you're also going to see the option to return a title early. So if you finish a book before the lending period, you can just return it early. Uh, it's going to return itself automatically after that 7, 14, or 21 days, so depending on how long you have it borrowed for. Um, but if you want to return it early, perhaps there's someone waiting in line for that particular book, you have that option. So we're going to go into a book right now, and I'm going to show you a bunch of the really fantastic tools you have in Libby that uh, Lindsay mentioned here. So if I tap in the middle of a book, you'll see exactly where I'm at in the title. You'll see how many pages I've progressed. And if you click on this on the right-hand side where it says what page I'm on and out of how many, it will adjust to how many pages are left in a chapter, how far I'm percentage-wise, and then back to how much I am in the particular title. Um, on the top right-hand corner, you'll see this little hamburger option here, which is going to let me see various things, including the ability to go to different chapters. I also have the ability to adjust my reading settings. Uh, Lindsay mentioned dark mode. So on the right-hand side here, we have lighting, and it's currently set at bright, which is uh, a little tough on my eyes. So I can put it into dark mode, or the one that I actually personally prefer, which is sepia tone, which is a little bit easier, uh, but not all the way uh, white on black. You'll also see here that you can adjust the text scale. So I uh, have eyes that are not as good as they used to be, so I can actually enlarge this font just a little bit. And then as I scroll down a little bit, you'll see an option where it says book design, and this is where you'll see all of your different options, including that open dyslexic font, which is great for any of your students that may have dyslexia. It's going to adjust the kerning on those, uh, on all the words there that they can much more easily see. You can also choose all these other fonts, or you can choose whatever the publisher has decided is working best for their title. We'll go back to the reading settings. We'll hit done there. I want to show you a few other options that are in there. So up here on your hamburger, you also have uh, some tips and secrets. And this is just a really nice way to get some quick troubleshooting or some quick ideas on ways to better explore Libby. I'm not going to go through all those right now because you'll see a whole bunch of them as you go through. Um, but something else you have the ability to do is to see all of your bookmarks. So when you are on a particular title or a particular page, rather, up in the middle here, you'll see a bookmark. And if I just want to save this particular page, I can just click a bookmark right there. Or if I want to save a specific, uh, say I want to do a paragraph of this that I want to remember. You know, Maybe your students are using this particular book for a research paper, or they're doing a book report or something along those lines, and they want to add quotes later. All you have to do is tap and hold on a particular word. And then if you drag it across, then you have the ability to Highlight this, you can change the color, you can make a note for yourself, remember this later, and then I'll hit done, and then I can save myself that as a bookmark. And then back in my hamburger of options here, you'll see that I have bookmarks, and I can go to the different bookmarks that I've created really quickly. It's going to show me all of the notes that I've made. And all of these notes are going to be saved. So even if I return a title and then go and borrow it again, which a student might want to do for a research paper, all of those are going to be saved for them, that they can go in and they have options to go in and save those. And then they can actually export them as well if they're interested. You'll also see 
the ability to adjust how you're looking at the particular screen. Maybe you just want one page showing at a time. And you can click on this magnifying glass and you can search for specific things in the book. You know, maybe there's a specific name of a character that you want to look for or a specific word. And speaking of specific words, if you tap on one word and hold it down, you also have the ability to define that particular word and get a definition. So if there's uh, students reading a, you know, perhaps a scientific text or something for a class that has a some heavy language, uh, they're able to learn more about it in there. All right, now let's go to our shelf. I want to show you some few things about audiobooks as well. So I open up an audiobook here. You're not going to be able to hear it, but right in the middle there will be a play button, and I click play, and the title is going to start playing. You can see on the right-hand side here that it's going to just start counting down. There's a lot of really fun things you can do with audiobooks that I love. One of them is adjusting the playback speed. So you have this little uh, thing up here in the top right-hand corner, stopwatch. I lost my train of thought for a second there. And if you click on it, you can adjust it by 25 to five, uh, 1.5, 1.75 to 2, and it will go back to one time speed. Or you can click and drag down slowly, and you can adjust the playback speed by uh, 1 one hundredth of a percentage as well. So. I like to use this depending on the narrator's accent or voice and how fast they speak. You can adjust this a little bit at a time and then it'll adjust for you. There is also a sleep timer. So if you want to put a title in uh, into the sleep timer mode and say you're going to fall asleep listening to an audiobook but you don't want to miss too much of it, you can use that sleep timer to adjust exactly how long it is until it turns off the title automatically in case you fall asleep. Much like your ebooks, you can also create bookmarks and you can create notes for yourself in an audiobook by using that same uh, bookmark here in the top right hand corner. So if I click and hold that, you'll notice at the bottom of our screen there is a yellow marker that is extending the longer that I hold this down. And what that's doing is it's creating a bookmark of the entire section that I'm currently saving. When I let go of the button, it's going to let me make myself a note, and then I can save it, and I can come back into our bookmarks here, and I can find that particular bookmark. And again, I can make myself notes for that bookmark. I can change the colors of them if I want, and that's just a great way to save quotes in an audiobook the much the same way that you would save a particular title or a particular quotation in an ebook as well. Uh, if you click in the middle of the book, you'll see that you can also go back 15 seconds or go forward 15 seconds, or if you want, you can drag your uh, finger right and left and it will adjust to go forward 60 seconds or you can go back 60 seconds. And it's just a nice, easy way to use uh, kind of the ways you would normally interact with an app, uh, much the same way that you would interact with Libby. Uh, on the right-hand side of an audiobook, you'll also see the ability to, much like an ebook adjust exactly how much time is showing, how much time you left in the chapter, and how far along you are in this particular book. I'm going to pause that, and again, I can go back to my shelf. If I go back to my shelf here, I will see that I also have a bunch of titles that I have on hold. And this is going to show me exactly how long I have to wait for each of these titles. And you'll see that these two titles both have nine weeks. So this is something where if a student has uh, finals coming up and they are seeing that both these books are going to become available for them at right around the same time and they're getting nervous about not finishing them. If you manage that hold, you can suspend it. And what that's going to do is it's going to extend the amount of time that you have that title on hold for. And so when you get to the front of the line, you're not going to be using those precious moments that you have to read that title if you can't get to it. And you can always adjust that if you like, but it's going to be there on the shelf and then you'll see exactly how much time you're going to have that particular title is suspended for. Every single page you're on in your shelf is also going to have an actions button, and that's just going to let you suspend all of your holds, or you can synchronize your shelf. And what that means is it's going to synchronize any apps that you have with be on. Everything is going to uh, stay the same amount of time. So if you're opening up Moby Dick on this particular uh, app on my iPhone, I can then look at it on my uh, iPad at home, and it will sync everything up for me. You also have the ability to create tags, and this is much like creating bookshelves in Goodreads. So 
If you see specific books that you want to put in specific collections, you can create new collections uh, anytime you want, and then you have the ability to go in there and you can see the titles that you've put in those. And you don't have to have read a specific book or have it borrowed to put it in a specific collection. Just go to a title, and you'll see on the right-hand side here there's a tag option. You can click that. You can put it in any of the tags you've created, or you can always create a new one as well. Create that tag, and now that's going to be in my read later. It's going to be the only one in there for now. Uh, again, tags are just a really great way to organize your collections. Um, things that you want to read later, things that you loved, things that you, for some reason, maybe want to qualify or categorize everything under your puppies category. I think I have a theme for you guys there. Uh, and something else that's really fun and really great about Libby is, Lindsay mentioned that you can have multiple collections connected at the same time. So if you tap Libby Space in the top right-hand corner of your library, you're going to see a number of different options here. Some really great quick ones that I'm just going to point out that you guys can explore later is the ability to get some help with Libby. This is going to connect you to our 24-7 help support. You can also send uh, suggestions for things that you're not seeing in Libby directly to our uh, development team. They love getting those uh, from our users. You can learn a whole bunch more about Libby. You're always going to get some great Libby Academy quick videos that will show you some fun tips and tricks here. Um, and then at the top, you'll notice that I have a couple of different libraries here. If you want to ever add a different library, say your students at your university also happen to belong to the library uh, at home where they're at, they can click Add a Library, and then down here you're able to pick and choose, or again, you can just search like we did before. And then once you've saved several libraries here, and you click her face again, you'll see that I can toggle back and forth between Cuyahoga County and, and Seattle Public really easily. And so now, no matter what book I borrow, whichever one it's from, borrow a book really quickly here, and you'll see that no matter what uh, library I have borrowed these titles from, they're all going to show up on my shelf at the same location here. So we'll go to our shelf, and we'll see that all of my loans, whether it was from Cuyahoga County or Seattle Public, it's all going to show up in the same place. And you'll also notice here that this little uh, Diamond guy is a different color, and that's just letting me know that this one is from Cuyahoga County, whereas these ones were from Seattle. You'll also see, if you click on her little face in the top right-hand corner here, uh, the ability to add additional library cards. So if you have multiple people that are using the same particular app, maybe you have a parent who happens to be a professor and a student who happens to be their son or daughter, they can use the same app and they can put in different library cards. Uh, you can also do something as simple as clicking Libby's face in the top right-hand corner here, and then you can adjust how she looks all throughout the app. And there's just a lot of really fun things you can do here in Libby that you can play around. The longer that you use it, the more you'll, you'll find out and the more you'll discover about it. So um, that's a, a quick kind of dive through everything that you have uh, able to do in Libby. And take a look if we've got any questions here. I'm going to... Stop sharing for a moment. And all right, looks like we've got some questions in here. I can just go ahead and answer. Um, is there a way to filter ebook versus audiobook? Yes, there is. So um, actually, Lindsay or Mark, if you want to give me back the uh, sharing option, I'll actually pop back in there and I will show you guys that real quick. A great question. So I'll actually show something that I love to do <clears throat> is I will go into a collection here. Let's start from scratch. So we've got we've got everything available. So I'll apply my preferences. Something that I really love to do is I will click this explore button and I will go to the subjects and I'll just click fiction or nonfiction depending on what I'm in the mood for. And then on the right-hand side, there's a Refine button. And that's going to let me search by format as well. So I'll just search for audiobooks right now. And then something I love to do is go in there and also click uh, the Sort By. And I will sort by the release date. And so what that's going to show me is the most recent titles that my library has added. And then if I want to go in here and say, I want to see the most recent titles that they've added, and they're only audiobooks, but I also want to make sure that I can actually borrow one right now. Now I can see the newest titles that my library has added. Um, 
without you know needing to wait, and I can ingest that by ebook and audiobook. So um, I also saw somebody ask what's the difference between the Overdrive app and the, the Libby app. So the Overdrive app is our older app, and once everything is in Libby, there's a few small things that is in the Overdrive app that currently is not in Libby, and one of them is uh, screen reader accessibility. Uh, so the Overdrive app currently works with um, JAWS and different types of screen readers. We're working on adding those into Libby, um, but that would be really the only thing in Libby or in Overdrive in the Overdrive app that the Libby app doesn't currently have. Uh, we're also adding multilingual support for the uh, user experience in Libby, and that's one other thing that's in the Overdrive app. Um, but the main benefits of using the Overdrive app is the ability to have multiple libraries in there, all the ease of use with the searching, uh, the titles, once you borrow them, they go right to your shelf and you don't have to worry about downloading any parts or anything like that. They play automatically. So uh, lots of really great stuff there. All right, let's go back into stop sharing. All right. So we've got a question here from Howard. I'm going to let Lindsay answer this. Is your academic content as extensive as your popular title collection? I will let you take it away. Yeah, sure. So we do have a really large collection of academic content. Um, so the two million titles that are available to purchase, a lot of those are going to be popular fiction and nonfiction titles. But um, it's kind of a misconception that we don't have academic content. Um, we do have content from 40 plus university presses, um, John Wiley and Sons, Elsevier. So there's a lot of content that is academic content. And we're always growing and looking for new um, publishers to partner with. So if there's any ever anything that is not available um, that you want, we work um, a lot with getting new publishers and signing agreements with them getting titles in different um, lending models, simultaneous use, cost per circ. I thought somebody did ask about the restrictions of cost per circ titles. And um, yeah, not every publisher has um, warmed up to the idea of cost per circ, but we're seeing a lot of success in it, particularly with the academic market. Um, gives you an opportunity to kind of dip your toe in the water of a title, not sure if it's gonna be popular or not, you don't have to go through actually purchasing that full title. Um, you can kind of put it in cost per circ and see how well it does. So the cost per circ title availability is a little bit limited now, but it's growing every week. Okay. Saw so another one here that was, and Lindsay, this might be for you. Uh, when we delete the library account that we had and resubscribe, do our previously purchased titles show or do we lose them? So if you were to um, cancel OverDrive, um, you are able to transfer your titles to a different vendor if that's something you would like to do. If you were a former OverDrive customer and decide to come back, it's probably likely that we can um, reestablish the titles that you had purchased um, and if you didn't take them with you when you left. There's another one in here. I'll just keep asking the ones that look like they're for, for you, Lindsay. Uh, can you tell us more about the language learning titles? Are they just for beginners? Is there a variety of world languages available? There is a variety of world languages available, not just for beginners. We have some um, series that are kind of stepped increase from beginner to an intermediate to advanced titles. We also have, um, I don't think I mentioned this, we have a lot of titles in other languages. We actually have a very large collection of Spanish titles. Um, we have titles in a lot of different languages, Spanish, French, Italian, German, um, a lot of different titles that are available. Uh, I saw another question that was asking if, if I could expand on the dyslexic option. So, the font is called Open Dyslexic, and it is the approved font uh, for dyslexic readers. And what it, it, it basically does is it adjusts the font and the kerning of the, uh, of the particular letters so that uh, people with dyslexia can delineate between specific letters. So um, once you choose that as your reading option, it's going to just set that as your standard for every single 
uh, title that you borrow. So uh, I've heard from a lot of end users, end users actually who have said that it really does enable uh, their dyslexic readers and their family to be able to see the titles and read them much more easily. Um, you can still, with the dyslexic font, adjust the size and the color and, and things of that nature, but it really does um, do a lot of good for people with dyslexia. Um, so another one here, do you plan to add a wishlist feature, such as the one on Overdrive? So that is the main crux of, uh, of the, the tags. Um, those are a really, really powerful tool, and they're going to, I guess, basically replace the wishlist is a, a fair way to say it. But um, it's a way to create wishlists for yourself that are much more powerful and sorted, sortable and editable and, and all sorts of great stuff like that. So uh, the tags are going to replace that, and, and they're a really great option for you. Uh, scrolling through here. Uh, if you've got a question here from Ben, if you put in a hold for the same book from both libraries, does it cancel the hold from one when you check out the book from the other? So it will borrow the book from the one that it becomes available to first, and then I believe they're working on a, uh, a quick update that will remove the hold from the other library as well. That's a great question. Um, Lindsay, you got a question about does this integrate with discovery services like Summon? That feels like a you question. Um, I am not sure about Summon. I do know that there is rarely an integration um, system that we do not work with. We have a really large authentication team, authentication development team that comes up with creative solutions if there is um, some sort of barrier. We've come up with a lot of different unique authentication methods like email self-registration. I would have to check on summons because that is not something that I'm aware of, but I will do so and um, let you know if that is compatible. And then we got another one here. Um, if one doesn't know what book one wants, is there a good way to search by topic? Um, yeah, that was what I was showing with the, the genre search. Um, you can go in there by subject, and you can pick a specific subject, and then you can narrow it down that way. Uh, you can also use the search bar at the very top of the screen that's always going to be there to search for a random keyword or a subject or topic that way as well. Um, so the, the short answer is yes, and the much longer answer is yes. There's a, a, a bevy of options for you. Uh, to discover the content that you're interested in um, by, by topic. Okay. I think that looks like most of the questions. If you have any more, you can put some in there. We're here for a few more minutes, but um, I think that's just about everything in here. Okay. It looks that way to me. This is Mark from ACRL and Choice, and I would just jump in and say if you do have additional questions, Drop them into the, the Q&A or, or even the chat, and we can make sure that we, we get to those. Um, so we'll give you a, you know, a second or two here to do that. I see Ben uh, simply says to, to the presenters, cheers, which uh, we appreciate. All right. So as we wait for a couple of questions maybe to come in through, I'll take a second here um, to remind folks that we uh, are recording today's session. So you know, be on the lookout for that email from ACRL and Choice. Um, and before things wind down, I just want to circulate the post-webinar survey to the folks that are out there. If you have a second and um, could let us know how we did today, we would really appreciate that. So it's a quick five or six question survey um, just to let us just reflect on today's session. We appreciate your taking the time to fill that out. Um, and let's see. Do we see any more? So we have a question that came in here, it looks like, from Victoria. Who is asking? Let 
Let's see. Is there a way to export notes? So I think that that's probably a question for Adam. Yes. Yeah, so if you go into your notes, um, there's an option for you to, to export them. So you can uh, take a look at those uh, on your own devices and, and things like that. And, and then, as I mentioned, also if you borrow the title again, uh, it will also sync so that you can still access those as well in the app when you are um, when you're actually looking at the title. But the, the short answer is yes. You just okay. go in and you look at those notes, and there'll be an ex export option for you in the, the bookmarks and notes. Excellent. Um, and we've got a, another question here. I think this one's probably for Lindsay um, from Victoria. And Victoria asks, and do you have Arabic, Farsi, Turkish titles? Um, do you have collections with those languages? So I am sure we have Arabic titles. As far as Farsi or Turkish, I would have to check on that as well. But we do have a fairly large collection of Arabic titles. We have um, quite a few um, Arabic-speaking colleges, actually, that, that have requested those titles. Great, great, great. Um, we've got a question from Paul, uh, and Paul asks, is there a way to filter out abridged audiobooks? Or are there many abridged audiobooks in the collection? That's a great question. Most of them are going to be full length audiobooks. Um, you know, let me look after the fact and we can connect it to you via email because I don't want to give you the wrong answer on that. Um, I have not come across very many, if any, abridged audiobooks, but um, yeah, we can look into that further for you. It's a great question. Sure, sure. All right, we got a question that came through, it looks like, and I think this would go to Lindsay um, from Kendra, who asks, how does this interface with our catalog? Um, are MARC records available to load? Does it, does it match up with EBSCO discovery? <laughs> So we have a couple different options for MARC records. We do have a partnership um, with OCLC as well as eBibliophile for paid records um, that you are already able to get. And we also offer free um, Overdrive MARC Express records, which contain a minimum bib information, but are going to have a standards description, title, author, ISBN, and a link to the title page. And um, those are free. They are delivered into our Marketplace admin portal 24 hours after purchase. Um, and then you can edit them and upload them into your catalog. All right, great. Great, so we out of time. We are just a couple of minutes um, before the scheduled end of the program. Um, so I will take a minute here to say thank you, Lindsay, and, and thank you, um, Adam, for taking the time to present today. I think definitely a ton of information there. Really cool to see the app in action. Um, so thank you so much for that. You're welcome. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thanks. And uh, I would just remind folks out there that we did record today's program. So look out for that follow-up email. It should come probably first thing tomorrow morning. Um, should have a link to the recording for you. And one more time, I'll, I'll plug the brief uh, six-question survey there for you. If you have a second to let us know how we did, we always appreciate the responses. Um, and I would just say, hey, thanks to all of you out there um, for taking the time to view the presentation today. I hope you enjoyed the session, and I hope the rest of your day is great. <laughs>